Welcome. Welcome back. Welcome to the Creative Tribe Podcast. This is a podcast about all things that fuel a creative lifestyle. I'm Brian. And I'm Rita. And together we are Label Me Other. Label Me Other is our production company. And one of our goals is to create creative problem solvers. So if this sounds like something that you're interested that you're interested in, then head over to our TikTok, search for Label Me Other, and join our creative tribe. Uh, go to our YouTube, same name, create uh label, label me other, creative tribe. Um, we post over there daily on both. Uh, so go over there, give us a like, subscribe, like the podcast. Uh, so if you have any questions in the realm of content creation and starting a creative lifestyle, uh, send us an email at labelmeother at gmail.com. New episodes of the podcast every Tuesday. Every Tuesday. Every yep. Tuesday. All right. So starting out. We always like to start our podcast out with our vent session. And this vent session is for those of us, for, for, for those of you who are just now joining us, our vent session, this is where we get anything off of our chest that has us in a negative mood. Uh, one of the keys to, to having a creative lifestyle is having the space to shake off any negative energy that you may have stored within. And yeah. so my vent session that I have is Nintendo Joy-Cons for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, I like to game. I'm a gamer. My son likes to game. More so Roblox. He gets on a Switch every now and again. My daughter, she's on Roblox. Uh, gotcha Club and all, all those sorts of things. But nice. one thing is that really, really has gotten on my nerves, Rita, is these joy cons that are on the side of the, uh, of the switch so the switch is like this hybrid thing everybody knows what a switch but if, but if you don't yeah. but if but but if you don't it's a hybrid gaming console where it's handheld and you could put it into the dock and you could play on your tv uh these little joy cons they're really really small yeah. and they develop what people are called joy con drift so it's like if you're not mm -hmm. controlled like if you're not touching the control your 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 player or avatar or whatever will start moving to the right or to the left wherever the drift is like without you even touching it ah uh, so yeah. you can send them back to nintendo um for them to fix it they'll fix it for free but of course you know you got to go through the whole thing of them sending you the box and then you sending it back and the thing is you're not going to get a brand new joy con you're going to get a refurbished joy con uh. which is fine but they make it very difficult for you to buy new ones. And I just need one. I need a left Joy-Con. I don't need like the, whole, the whole bunch. Yeah, they're like $79. Yeah, that's high. $79. And so I was looking all over. I was like, but they do sell them individually. You could buy a, a right Joy-Con. You could buy a left Joy-Con. I went to GameStop to buy a left Joy-Con and I saw that they had it. You know, of course, with GameStop, they don't put the actual thing in the box. It's just an empty box. So I take the empty box, go up to the go, go up to the counter. I'm like, hey yeah. man, you know, do you have this in stock? And he was like, he was like, no, he's like, he's like Nintendo, uh, they're they're like putting a cap on like the inventory that they give GameStop. So a lot of times they have they they have the display box on the shelf, but they won't have anything in stock. Wow. <clears throat> so I'm going all over trying to find just an individual left Joy-Con that's like 39 bucks. Yeah. That's fine. I can't, can't find, find an individual Joy-Con anywhere. Not on Nintendo site, not anywhere. But I can wow. find plenty of the package two, you know, left and right Joy-Cons that come together that cost like 80 bucks. <sighs> so what's up with that? Like, yeah, that's... like you know, like you want me. It's like I'm not. I'm not even going to use the right one. My right one's fine. I just need the left Joy-Con. Yeah, and I can't yeah. buy it. See, this is what what causes people to do some shady nature. Like I'd buy two, <laughs> take out the one I need, and take put the one back in there, and be like, "Listen, it's not. It's 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 not working for me." <laughs> like you lead people to do stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, it's like, hey, it's much easier than just sitting here like trying to hunt it down. You know. Yeah, it's like stop trying to make me pay 80 bucks. I just want to pay the 39.99 whatever, 40 something plus tax just for the left Joy-Con. Let me yeah. buy the left Joy-Con. And even like, you know, like the local like gaming gaming uh stores. Like I can't they don't Nothing. sell the individual. All they have 
are the package left and right. That's interesting. So if you anybody know out there knows, huh? <laughs> right. Put in the comments below. Put in the, put in the comments. Let me know where I could buy an individual left Joy-Con. Yeah, like brand yeah. new, not a refurbished one, just brand new left Joy-Con. Because see, on my PlayStation 5, I had the similar issue where it was drifting on my controller and they're mm. all like the, the, I guess the stock ones that come with the PlayStation, the white controllers. And there's like after a few months, they just all start to drift. And so mm. um, a friend of mine was showing me his and it's like, you know, one of the colored nice ones. And it's like noticeably like heavier material than than the than the default white one so i'm like and i've heard that that they've had like a lot of complaints about like these controllers being janky and having to send them in and then you wait for months because you don't have a controller while it's trying to be fixed so it's just like it's not worth it so i guess their remedy to it is like creating better quality controllers for the colored versions uh, i guess of the playstation 5 controllers so I'm I'm in the same boat, kind of not not exactly, but I need to buy like a seventy dollar controller, and I'm just like I don't want to pay that. That's yeah, just way too like much money. Seventy bucks for a controller? That's yeah, no, it's outrageous. No, no, no. Well, yeah. So what's your event session? What do you want to get on? Look, best of luck to you there. <laughs> um, yeah. So for me, I think this week I I need to vent about like choosing joy. Mm. For me, I. It's so hard sometimes where you're kind of like hit with things left and right constantly, specifically in the work environment. And and you have to like literally choose joy. You have to choose not to let these petty things that people are coming to you with or these bogus requests like get to you. You have to just shake it off or dust it off or whatever and and choose to not let it sway your emotional state and it, mm-hmm. I'll be honest it's been a, a huge struggle for me and I'm venting about it today because I'm just like I I need to put it out into the universe that it's a thing that I'm I'm actively trying to do which is seek joy in these situations I feel like I'm getting maybe a little bit better um certain things that used to like bug me I'm just kind of like let me see how fast I can get it done and off my plate so that I don't have time to like you know sulk yeah. in it yeah um so so that's that's kind of where I'm at now, like choosing joy and letting letting all this pettiness go and and just not worrying about like if people get it or want to understand like the direction or ways of going and it just and just doing me. Just do just do me. If I want to make something, just make it. If I want to do something, just do it. And just right. not worry about trying to make it like this huge team collaborative effort or this like approach where we all can look good it's just like eh, i'm over that like i'm gonna choose my joy my joy is just to worry about me (laughs) right (laughs) you know as long as you do your part as long as long as you do your part do uh, like do what you can control take you know change do whatever change do whatever what you what's in your power to change or do yeah yeah for sure for sure that's that's where I'm at, and that's where I'm gonna try to stay. No matter how hard they try to pull me out of it, <laughs> I'm gonna try to stay there. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. All right. I mean, so then that leads into what we want to talk about today, and that is how do you reset? It's like whenever you're, you know, going full force in whatever creative endeavor, or whatever creative thing that you're doing, you know, this it's always good to just take out time to just stop. Yeah. And stop and reset. So we want to like talk about like how we reset. Um, uh, if you have any things that you do um, that you do to read, to reset, to, you know, just get Start those over. creative, you know, things, you know, just to, to, to recharge and to refill, you know, send us an email at label me other at gmail.com. But so Rita, what do you do to reset? You know, um I mentioned this only I think once before on uh, on our TikTok page but for me like as yourself I'm a gamer I really really do enjoy like getting away from my current life my current circumstances and like being a character being someone else and exploring their world and what they're going through Mm -hmm. um so that is a huge benefit for me um to reset also 
movies and shows like once again I guess there's a theme here like getting to explore another character in their life and what they're going through is a really uh, big escapism for me so um so games uh, movies are great tv shows are great um even like exercise here recently has been a big one just to like get away from the desk move walk um you know when when you're creative especially when you're like video editors as we are and content creators it's like you just spend an absorbent amount of time like sitting you know sedentary unless you have a standing desk um but you're you're like your screen time is probably outrageous compared well so I was gonna say compared to most people but everybody's on their cell phone these days so that may be a little bit skewed but we get a lot of screen time and even though I'm mentioning more screen time but it's good to like get out go to the gym go for a walk like those are those are really big on resetting but I I have a, like a little struggle that I have with resetting is just that I the guilt that I feel mm. for when I'm like not doing things to to better myself. Yeah. I'm always thinking like I should be working on my business. I should be doing this instead of watching this two hour movie. I should be I don't know learning how to market, learning how to do like I have like I have ultimate like guilt from like oh. not like constantly doing things and feeling guilty for like stopping and and starting you know something for leisure but I know it's necessary I understand it's necessary but yeah. I do struggle a little bit with guilt yeah I mean I, I I'm I'm, I'm kind of similar to you you know yeah I, I I do gain but more so it's just for me to reset is I do go for walks I take my dog out for walks we walk trails uh because yeah. like in our neighborhood there's a nice trail that goes beside like a uh, creek and so me and my dog Rocket, we go for walks. Um, but I'm really big into just like music. Music huh. and strangely now, okay, so I'm a big fan of theme parks. And it's just not and I'm a theme, I'm a big fan of theme parks and the mechanics of theme parks, like how they tell stories, certain mm-hmm. ones. Now I say yeah, theme yeah. parks because there's a big difference between theme parks and amusement parks. Um, mm-hmm. But like theme parks, like how they tell stories through like the like the 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 uh, through there are through the through through the whole experience from walking into the park to going to yeah. the different parts of the park to within the rides. So I watch a lot of uh, theme park POVs and not just ride POVs, just theme park, just walking around the park. Oh. So I have that playing in the background. I'll have some music on and I just sit back and just relax and watch that. And it just is very calming like that for some strange mm-hmm. reason, like that helps me to reset. So that's like one of the main things that I do. Does it, do you like to watch it because it just makes you feel like you're there or do you like to, does it not take anything away from you if you were to go in person? To well, I think, it? I think it feeds into strangely, the cinematographer in me Uh and and how I process like filmmaking and I think in because how I process filmmaking is a lot through like people watching I like Mm -hmm. people watching so sometimes I'll take my camera out whenever I'm just you know just trying to capture different images like just different things and I just people watch Mm -hmm. and this and and these people who do these theme park POV walkthroughs it's just them with a GoPro or like a gimbal and they're just walking through the crowd walking through the people so you're taking in all of that stuff so yeah it's 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 it's, it's, it's a little bit as if you're there but it's just i'm just looking at just everything and it's just it's calming to me interesting interesting yeah i think people watching is like the most underrated thing that you could do as a creative because it really it it like piques your brain to think about things from a from a narrative standpoint like Mm -hmm. for example if my wife and I are at the airport and we're people watching we will we will ask each other the backstories of the people that we see so if we see someone sitting like walking and they're in a business suit and they're pulling their bag they're like okay what's his story where where is he coming from did he have breakfast this morning did he have you know kids at home is he just a loner in his his, in his apartment is he a gym rat like you know just Mm -hmm. all these things that you start to like cultivate about what this person could be based on their appearance and based on how they're walking how they're presenting themselves in the world I mean it's a really good exercise in and creativity, I think. Yeah. It refills yeah. you. It refills you. Yeah. You spend all your time 
in your day job or whatever creative things and you're just pouring out, you're pouring out, you're putting all of that stored up creativity, you're pouring it out and you, there needs to be a time to where you can sit back and refill, recharge, reset, new ideas, new things. And then you can apply that to whatever you're doing. Whenever you go back, you're more focused, you, you know, you're, you're, you're yeah. recharged. So yeah, I mean, th there's this back and forth, this yin and yang, and it all works together. And yeah. resetting is an important part, I believe of, you know, a creative lifestyle. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Finding ways to do it that are effective are, are big. So again, we want to know what do you do to reset? What do you do to recharge? Let us know our, um, uh, our our email address is labelmeother at gmail.com. You can ask the question on Twitch. You can ask the question on our YouTube. We'll find yep. it. We'll see it. And we'll address it here on the podcast. We want to thank you for listening. And we'll see you in the next one.